Hello there and welcome to my first tutorial making a multiplayer game. Um, we're going to get started straight into this. This is aimed by the way at um, advanced to intermediate people who have made their own games before so uh, I'm not going to go too slow. I'm going to try and make things nice and, and quick and explain only the multiplayer side of things and how to get multiplayer working if you're already able to make single player games. So what we're going to do first up is in this tutorial we're just going to make a complete setup of what we're doing. So we're going to um, go to the asset store and we're going to search for mirror. We're going to use mirror because uh, mirror is the uh, one of the cool assets that were um, made to replace the Unity's um, multiplayer. Um, so we're going to just simply put this in, thinking as I go, so click import with mirror. So mirror is completely free as you can see. Why it's really cool is that there's a whole bunch of awesome um, documentation uh, that you can't, that you didn't really get with the old um, the old Unity's multiplayer. There was some help but not many people making games with it, but this one's got some really really great documentation. So I'm just going to import this and as it imports I'll quickly jump to the, the documentation so um, I will give you a little look so if you go to mirrornetworking.com you can see there's a whole bunch of um, guides and examples um, and full documentation that's all here that you can use uh, there's also a bunch of videos if you go onto YouTube you can see a bunch of videos if you click on the getting started it's actually got the video tutorials here so you can um, add this um, these video tutorials as well to your uh, to the to what you're doing so this simple things like setup that we're going to do we're going to cover some of these things um, as we go as we make a, a little sim simple first person shooter style game so hopefully uh, this is all imported and into my project I'm going to pause the video and uh, come back when it's in yep, so mirrors in and uh, there are a few errors that pop up and the reason for that is because um, when you first run mirror, so I'm just going to save this project um, file save and file save project what you need to do is you need to close unity and you need to open unity again so that the um, the project all works as expected so I'm just going to pause again and uh, when unity is back up and running I'll uh, get back on and explain what's happening next yeah so that was a really weird thing that um, tricked me the first time I uh, tried to install mirror and uh, try to get things working but um, you should see now that mirror folder is in your project and uh, script templates as well is in your project and all I've got is just this blank scene so um, all I'm going to do is uh, nice and simply I'm just going to create a, a really um, simple scene in here with um, a 3D cube and we're just going to call this ground and I'm going to stick it in the middle of the world, so reset the position and I'm going to set the scale to 50 by 50 so that I've got somewhere to run around on and um, it looks like uh, window rendering lighting, it looks like the lighting hasn't been auto generated so I'm just going to generate that lighting so that we get um, the, color, the colors back so um, yeah, so I've got my scene and we're ready to start creating. So the next really important step um, as shown in the uh, documentation and in the, the readme that's in inside of Mirror is that you need to set the uh, some of your project settings. Um, what we need to go is go into project settings, go to player um, and then choose other settings and we need to go down to the uh, compatibility level, the API compatibility level and we need to change that to .NET 4 compatible um, and that's it for the, the, the basic setup. Now we can get our scenes um, up and running and get something on the, the, uh, something on the scene that's networked. So my first step is to put the network manager on the scene. Um, so all we're going to do is just create an empty game object. So right click create empty and then I'm going to call this network manager. But this is the actual game object but we have to add the network manager component. So if you start typing in network you'll see that they, you get all of these new ones and if you haven't restarted 
um, Unity after you imported Mirror, these will be the old ones, they won't look like the same icons. So if your icons are different, then restart Unity first with Mirror installed and they should be good. So I'm going to click on Network Manager and um, I'm going to add in another Network Manager HUD. So the Network Manager HUD just gives us some basic UI to work with and in a later tutorial I'm going to show you how to customize this a little bit so you've got your own. Um, what you'll see now is that if you were to hit play you'll see that your uh, when the game loads up you have the option to host uh, uh, which is create a client and a server on the same computer. We have the LAN client and we have the server only um, and I'll explain those more as we get into it but you'll see if you click LAN host nothing really happens right now it says it complains about the player prefab not being um, not being set up so we're going to do that. So I'm going to actually do this uh, the coolest way I know, the simplest way that I know I'm going to import um, a custom asset. So I'm going to go to Game Object, uh, sorry, Assets, Import Package, and then choose Custom Package. And on my desktop here, I should have um, a simple first person controller Unity package. And I'm just going to open and import that one. This will be available to you in the, as a link in the description of this video. Um, so you'll be able to download this and uh, get started. Um, if you want to do it yourself, there's um, a simple tutorial on my channel as well where you can do that. So the, if you go back to the assets, you'll see that there's a simple first person controller. If I double click on this and drag the player out onto the scene, you'll see that this is um, a really simple first person controller. Um, it's got a few little scripts and stuff, a uh, single script, sorry, that, that controls the character controller. And what I need to do is I'm going to... Um, just delete this camera off the scene just now um, and we'll just use this one um, so that I can demonstrate this so I'm just going to demonstrate that this basically you're allowed to move around and jump um, I don't know why the gizmos is on I must have accidentally clicked that but um, you've got some basic movement and control and these are going to be our um, we're going to convert this single player script into a multiplayer script so this uh, network manager here I'm just going to I'm in the middle of the scene and drag them up a little bit and um, the network manager needs to know about this player so that we're going to turn him into a prefab that the network manager can instantiate so if I um, nice and simply to turn this player is already in already a prefab I'm going to just delete him and um, I'm going to create that camera back again on my scene and just position it sort of somewhere in the middle of the scene. The reason for that is because when we don't have a camera, so when there's nothing in the scene at all, um, you'll want to be able to see something. So I'm just going to uh, rotate him around, face him down like this, something like that. Okay, and then back to my network manager. Uh, if we look down here, you'll see there's a bunch of settings that you can leave perfectly alone. Uh, the network address is localhost right now, and we're going to build a game right now and run it locally, so we'll leave this exactly as it is. Um, if for some reason it says in the documentation if th this doesn't work, then you might need to find your IP address to directly connect to this. If localhost doesn't work, if you have some settings on your um, on your computer. So this this is the slot that I'm looking for, this um, player prefab right now, and I can take player and I can put them onto here. Now you'll see when it set, when I try to do this, it won't let me do it. And the reason for that is that in order for it to be um, for it to be spawnable as a prefab, it needs to have a network component on it. Um, so if you look at the uh, network identity component and we add the network identity component to this uh, character then you'll be able to see that um, now if we go back to network manager we should be able to add this as a player prefab um, uh, if you hover over it says prefab of the player object prefab must be have a network identity maybe an empty game object or a full avatar um, and that's basically all that is and uh, now this will work as a prefab um, but obviously we want to be able to move it around as well and in order for that uh, movement to be synchronized over the network 
you have to also add the uh, network transform component. Um, there's a few more settings within here uh, that you can leave alone. Um, the important one here is because this is going to be our player, we want to set it as client authority. Again, if you hover over, um, this means that uh, rather than send just the movements to the uh, server, uh, what you can do is um, this gives you a much tighter control. So the the, the client, uh, this object, will you'll have control over the position, rotation, um, and scale, uh, the entire transform as you as you play this. So uh, we have our prefab is all set up. Now you'll notice that I've set this up on the actual prefab. So I didn't have one on the scene. So all these things should be um, should be good for that prefab. Um, now if we hit our game and we hit the um, we hit the host button you'll see that the, the, can, the player appears and I do have control over him. Now the, the problem, the first problem we have to solve is as you can see um, I can move my player around with the keys uh, but I don't have control over the, the camera so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way that we can enable this camera um, as it spawns in and disable the other one. But um, just to check that this actually does work across the network, um, we can see it in action. And this is the the step that's going to get uh, really frustrating when you're making multiplayer games, as you have to build this game um, in order to test it across the network and work in two instances of the same game. So. Uh, what you do is, uh, oh yeah, before we do this, um, if you go into build settings and go to the, the player settings, what you can do is this um, resolution and presentation here, uh, it, by default on 2019, um, it doesn't give you the dialogue to pop up. So if you just click on windowed and just choose a, a small resolution like the 1024 by 768 um, that way when you uh, do build this, so um, what I'm going to do is click build and run. Um, I'm just going to choose a temp folder just to, to stick it in there for now. Um, so when you click build and run, it will uh, run in a window of 1024 by 768 um, so we can uh, still see what's going on in the background and jump between the windows. So I should be able to um, it definitely didn't do 1024 by 768 but at least it's windowed so you can see right now we have the two windows I can uh, close this one here um, so I've got this window running um, if I click this window to host you'll see that the player appears and I can move them around um, if I click on here run this instance in uh, unity and then this time we're going to connect as a client you'll see that this the other guy is still here and uh, this guy's here and you'll see uh, problem number two is that uh, we have both of the players uh, moving with the same keyboard because um, they're both getting the same input and in the next video uh, we're going to fix that but uh, we've managed to do a fair amount in this and I don't want to take on take too much so we've managed to import mirror we've managed to create a simple scene we've managed to import a player prefab that gets spawned in by the network manager and the network manager um, is has the, the HUD and everything all ready to go so we're ready to start looking at some coding for getting this player to work uh, as a multiplayer rather than as the single player that it was designed for.